So what was it about Travis Beecham's original treatment that caught mm -hmm. your attention? Jan Roberts, Jan Monsters. And that was the main thing because uh, I immediately started thinking about what what we could do with it and I went to, to pitch and I started pitching the idea of the two pilots. I pitched the idea of uh, some crazy stuff that maybe two spoilers to they give out in this interview but uh, the character that comes out with the umbilical cord tied to, the, to its neck, you know, things like that. And, and they all were very enthusiastic about it and I thought, well, if they like those ideas which are a little crazy, I can make this movie. Yeah, in terms of what you added to the, um, well, Travis Beecham's original script, um, am I right in thinking that the sequence with the uh, young Mako? Yes. Because that, that had shades to me of Pan's Labyrinth, of the, yes. the fear and awe through young eyes. Yes, it's absolutely. I mean, that, that is a sequence I wrote. Uh, uh, originally, uh, Travis had, uh, we, we co-wrote the screenplay. And when he wrote the flashback, he wrote Mako, young Mako, in a skyscraper looking at the disaster through a window. And I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to put you right in the middle of it and have sort of a child's point of view of this because it's perfect for to create the audience, uh, the fear in the audience of what, what, what it would feel like, you know? Now, the monsters in the film are very terrifying. What kind of brief did you give the designers and those who made the concept art? Well, what we what we talked about, uh, I gave them very very uh, specific two two rules. I said, don't don't try to break the man in a suit proportions because we are honoring the kaiju Eiga, the Japanese giant monster movies. But uh, I said, keep that. But let's uh, base everything we do in texturing of real animals because the traditional kaiju uh, in the beginning of the genre they were always based on a, on a real animal an insect, uh, a reptile, a uh, shark, whatever, you name it. And we started basing the animals, the giant monsters in, in those animals, and then added those uh, bioluminescent striping to give the idea that they are designed, that they are created. Now, how important is it for this movie to succeed? Because it's an original uh, film, and Hollywood seems to be obsessed with rebooting things like Superman and Spider-Man. So how hopeful are you that this will succeed and help to pave the way for more movies that are original? Uh, to me, it's important. I don't want to be sanctimonious and say this is the only chance. I mean, you have Elysium coming up right away. Uh, how important it is? It's important for me and it's important for a certain streak of fantasy that I would love to, to see more, uh, a little more crazy, a little more uh, fantastic, a little more free. But, uh, you know, I think the movie will find its audience. I have absolutely no doubt that it will. It's a movie that uh, connects very strong with an audience. Yeah. Whether, the, whether the publicity machine gets them there the first weekend, that's a separate conversation. Mm. And finally, um, in the movie, you, uh, characters can drift into the minds of other beings. If you could drift into the mind of anyone, real or fictional, who would you choose and why? Real or fictional? I would, I would go with Mary Shelley. Because I would love to see uh, why, how she thought about Frankenstein and uh, the tale of the creature. I mean, it's one of my favorite uh, uh, creatures of all times and one of my favorite books of all times.